In this presentation, we will enter our beginning balances for both the jobs and the accounts within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop. Here we are in our practice file two. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown and the open windows list. We're gonna see what we're gonna do by going to our Excel sheet now. Within the Excel sheet, you'll note that we wanna set up these beginning balances. We wanna set up these beginning balances and we want the jobs to reflect these beginning balances. Now note that these beginning balances on the job don't reflect what is on the work in process and we'll have to deal with why that is. So that's gonna be a different type of system. We're not gonna be having the job sheet that's gonna be supporting the work in process, but we still wanna know what the job sheet is being consisted of. So we'll track that and think about that as we go through this process. So how are, are we gonna set this up? First, we'll set up the job information because it has the more complex data that we need to enter to it. Then we'll see what we have in our, our beginning balances and then we'll make the adjustment for them. So to do that, we're going to do a similar process as we did in the prior practice problem. We're going to write a check to enter these items. So we're going to write a check entering these items. Now it's going to be a bit tricky. We're going to have an extra step, however, with the direct materials. So let's see what this will look like. We're going to go to uh, QuickBooks. We're going to write a check. We can't just do a journal entry because we need to use the job uh, forms. And therefore, we need to use these forms to use the items to do this properly. Then we need to be able to set up a uh, checking account, which we don't have yet. I'm going to say, yes, let's set up the checking account. I'm simply going to call it checking, checking account. So checking, and that's going to be it. It's going to be a bank account type, and we will save and close that. Then we have our check. I'm going to go through the check. I'm going to write this as of the last day of the, of the year before. We're going to start our transactions in, which is 123120 or 1231. Let's do that again. 1231. Uh, one nine, the, the last period. I'm not going to write any vendor or amount. I'm simply going to go down to the tabs. We don't want the expense tab. We want the items tab. That's going to be the key. We want the items tab. Now the items we're going to start off, I'm going to have di uh, direct materials. I'm going to enter this just as we did before. However, there's going to be another step we're going to have involved in the direct materials. So the direct materials now you'll see has a cost of 1000. So now we're going to say, all right, how much do we need? 14. So I'm going to go back over here and say the quantity is going to be 1.4 to bring us up to the 14 for job number 14. It will be billable. And then we're going to go to the direct labor. And note that billable means that it will be used, it can be used when we invoice the client. And we'll talk about that when we get to the invoicing process. So note that that will connect to the invoice if we so choose. Then we're going to say that we have the direct uh, labor, which is 18,000 for job number 14. So I'm just going to put here 18,000 and I'm going to say, don't show me that again and no, and job number 14. And then we're going to say we've got the factory overhead, factory overhead, and that's going to be the 9,000. So 9,000 in factory overhead, 9,000. There we have that. That's job number 14 again. So job 14. Now I'm going to go right to job 15 on the same check. And we're going to go back to direct materials. Direct materials has that cost of the 1000 in it. And so we've got 18,000 we need. So I'm just simply going to put the quantity of 18. And that'll give us the 18,000 job number 15. Then we're going to go to the direct labor. Direct labor. And direct labor, we need 16,000. So we'll put in 16,000 direct labor. That's job number 15. And then we're on the factory overhead. Factory overhead needs the 8,000. So we'll put 8,000 here. 8,000. That's job number 15. That totals up, it's totaling up the check now at 83,000. And that would make sense because the 41 plus the 42 is gonna be 83,000. So it should total up then to the 83,000. I'm gonna go ahead and say save and close. And then we'll think about what happens on the trial balance. So save and close, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna go up to the trial balance to reports. We're gonna to go to the uh, accounting and taxes and trial balance. Changing the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. 
and here's what we have so far so note what happened is uh the the equity section is is fine but now we have this inventory asset and why is the inventory asset there because if i double click on this and i go to the prior period 010119 we had the materials the materials you'll remember we set up as inventory so we purchased the materials and now they're in the inventory asset what we really want them to do is to close out to cost of goods sold so i'm going to close this back out i'm going to say don't show me that again we're going to say uh no and then let's take a look at the prior year so if i change this to 010119 to uh 123119 then we see the cost of goods sold so note that as we record these items they're going to cost of goods sold not the work and process account and then we have the inventory tracking going to the 32 what the 32 go into inventory assets what i want is for the whole thing then to be in our beginning balances here uh and it should all close out to cost of goods sold so cost of goods sold for the prior year in other words should be that eighty-three thousand. we currently have the cost of goods sold at the 51 and that just means we need a, the second step for the inventory so the inventory is now on the books now i need to take it out of inventory and record the cost of goods sold this is where things get a little bit tricky for this tracking uh this tracking method and this is going to be used we'll use it here and we'll use it throughout the problem same kind of method so we need to we can't do this with just a journal entry we need to take it out of inventory and move it to cost of goods sold what's the the form that we would typically use to do that it's usually going to be either an invoice or a create sales receipt upon the sale of the item however when we when we move the materials it's not necessarily a, at the point of sale so in other words we're going to use this form in order to to do what we need to do but it's another one of those kind of forms where we're using the form not as it normally would be so of these two forms we want to use i'm going to use the create sales receipt with the assumption that we don't always use the create sales receipt when we bill the client when we invoice the client we usually use an invoice in the job costing system therefore i'm going to designate this create sales receipt in our system to be used to transfer from the the inventory materials inventory to the uh to the use of the inventory to the cost of goods sold so let's see what that would look like if i create the sales receipt normally the the journal entry with the create sales receipt would be to uh, debit the the debit the cash or the undeposited funds and then credit sales and then the other side would be taking out uh inventory decreasing inventory and recorded related cost of goods sold all we want is side two we we don't want we're not recording the sale here we're not getting cash at this point in time what we want is the sales receipt to record the second component which is the decrease of the inventory and the related cost of goods sold so what i'd like to do is actually even change the name of the form to reflect that it's for internal use only so what i'm going to do is go to the second tab up top the formatting we're going to go to the customize uh, data layout and then within the customized data layout i'm just going to change the name here from sales receipt i'm going to call it internal use only and say okay and then okay let's say okay and then that will at least help people to know that this isn't something we're going to give to the customer right this is going to be for internal use only we're going to then apply this i'm going to apply the first one to job number 14. so to job 14 we're going to close out of this i'm not going to be applying that we're going to say close out of that we're going to be tabbing through this needs to be on 123119 that looks good and then the item we're going to have is going to be the direct materials direct materials i'm going to make this a bit larger so we can see it and then the direct materials you'll recall had uh 1000 costs and we need 14,000 here so therefore i'm just going to put 14 in the quantity and you'll see you'll see there's nothing on this form and you're gonna say well what is it going to do you'll recall that if it was a sales receipt then the the cost would be driven by this form but it wouldn't be shown on the sales receipt because we wouldn't want to give it to the customer so therefore it is driving the cost which is going to be 14 times a thousand 14 thousand how do we know what that is because we set it up in the items so if you go to lists up top and then the item list 
we set up our item for the direct materials to be that $1,000. So it should do the journal entry. What is this going to do for us? Closing this back out, closing this back out. It's going to do the journal entry, debiting or increasing cost of goods sold and decreasing the inventory. Let's let's check that out. Let's do one. Let's do the second one and then check it out. We're going to say save and new, and yes. And the second one's going to be for job 15. And I'm going to say don't do that. Nothing there. Tabbing through. It's going to be the item of direct uh, materials, and we want the amount then for the second job to be 18,000. So we're going to do 18 units times the thousand that we entered in the system and so we're going to record this nothing's going to be happening on the sales side we're only doing the cost of goods sold in inventory i'm going to say save and close and say yes then we're going to see what happens to our reports we can go over to our trial balance and i'm going to say don't show me this again and we're going to say uh yes all right so there we have it so now it moved it now from the inventory asset to the cost of goods sold so now all we're left with is the checking account and the cost of goods sold. If we go into the inventory asset, double clicking on it, then uh, it went into the inventory asset and then back out of it. This is the same process we'll be using with, to track the inventory for the materials throughout the problem. So we'll close that back out. Now we're left with just these two accounts. We then need to be we, where we want to be is at these accounts. So all we need to do now is, is do a journal entry for the difference. So this is where we stand right now. And I'll just delete this and do it one more time so we can see it. This is where we stand at this point. This is our beginning balances. We have 83,000 in our QuickBooks account. So QuickBooks has 83,000 uh, negative. So negative 83,000 and then QuickBooks has cost of goods sold of 83,000, which would roll out basically into the equity section. So in other words, the balances as of 010120 to 010120, that's going to be in equity. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to put that in equity, 83,000. So I'm going to say the other side is going to be 83,000. That's a debit. It was in QuickBooks. So then we'll take the difference here. If we subtract these out, this minus this means we need to we need to uh, take what we have in QuickBooks and increase it 383 to get to 300,000. So our journal entry then, if I auto fill this down, copy this down, will be this. This is going to be our beginning balance adjustments. So let's enter these. We're going to go back to uh, QuickBooks. We will then do this with just a journal entry. So I'm going to go to the company up top. We're going to go to make journal entry. And we're going to set up these beginning balances as of 1231. And I'm going to set up cash. So or which is the checking account. It needs a debit of uh, 383,000. We determined 383 here. Then we're going to put in factory equipment 510. We don't have that account in here yet. So I'm just going to add it. Factory equipment. Setting it up. That's going to be a fixed asset type of account. We'll say continue and save. That's going to be for the 510. The next one should be accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation for the 153. We don't have that account set up. So accumulated depreciation. There it is. Setting that up. We're going to put that into the fixed asset account as well. And continue. And, and that's going to be a credit balance. Because it's a contra asset account. 153000 the next item we need after accumulated depreciation is accounts payable for 45,000. So we're going to type in accounts payable, set that up. That's going to be an accounts payable type of account and continue, save and close. That's for the amount of 45,000. And then finally, we're going to put the difference into equity. So equity, owner's equity, and that should give us that number. That should be the plug. 695,000. That's the 695,000. Okay, so there we have it. Let's go ahead and save and well, one other thing we're going to need to do if I say save and close now, it's it's going to give me an error uses the fixed asset, I'm going to say, okay. 
and it wouldn't let me post because the accounts payable needs a vendor. So I'm going to add a vendor and that's going to be, I'm going to call it Home Depot. So Home Depot is going to be our vendor. We're going to quick add it, set Home Depot up as a vendor and OK. Then I'm going to say save and close. Yes. And OK. And OK. And then we should have our beginning balances set up. If we go back to the trial balance in the open windows, then we've got the checking at 300,000, accumulated depreciation at 153, factory equipment at 510, and the accounts payable at 45, and the 612. These are, in essence, our beginning balances. Now we're going to enter the data for the first month of operations. So with these, these should tie out to what is on our trial balance here.